Okay, I'm going to go over a problem that has to do with calculating a, a centered moving average. And we're, we're basically we're going to look at season. We have data and it has seasonal uh, seasonal information in it. It's not just a straight linear type of uh, data that you're looking at. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple methods that you're going to use later. Uh, you might use later, and we're going to find some seasonal relatives. Okay, and we're gonna, and this problem comes from Stevenson Operations Management, Fourteenth uh, Edition, McGraw Hill, and this is the ISBN number. This is a very good book, good reference book. And this comes from Chapter Three, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for now. Um, so this is the information we have, and uh, we have different days, and then I guess the number served. In each one of these days and we want to obtain daily relatives for the number of customers at a restaurant for the evening meal given given that data and we want to first find the use a centered moving average method and they say I said can't use a seven day so one thing I like to do they have all this data side by side so what we could do we could just take this and copy this and paste it here and then stack this. I'm going to go Control C and put it here, Control V. So now we have all the data side by side. Um, and a good thing to do is just kind of graph the data so we could take it like this. And uh, I could go insert a plot and we'll just do a plot like this. And we don't really need to do, do anything. But we just see we can see it is seasonal. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and down. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is a, a seven day season. You know, every seven days it repeats. So and it says here use a seven day average, and that, that probably so we could say so we could say something like okay, uh, if we're gonna use a seven day average, let's just uh, let's call that the season. And I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we can take this and copy this. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. Oops, Control V, put it there instead. Delete that. So we have, so let me just go ahead and copy this format so it all looks the same. I'm going to go to Format Copy. And so now we have the season put in there. So, um, so the next thing it says, it says to use a, I want to do a centered moving average. So I'm going to type in here centered moving average. And, uh, and so we want it centered on seven days. So I, so I can't do, I can't be centered here. I got to go, if I want to be centered, it has to start here, three above and three below. And the one in the middle of seven. So I got to do my average starting here. Because it's centered and it's a seven day moving average. So it, so it has to be starting here, three above, three below in that day. So I would go equals average. And I can average these. Hit enter and it puts average for that. Now it rounds it off. So you want to make sure you take it out a few places so you can see what's going on. Now that happens to be, now I have that pointing to the wrong thing, don't I? I have it pointing to the season. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to drag it over here to. We're, we're talking about that, aren't we? We're talking about the number served. The average number served on the fourth day, the centered average is that. So I can just drag this down now. It's going to do all the other ones. Okay. And uh, let me put the formula in here. Equals formula text. And let's go ahead and copy that format again. So it looks nice. But the only thing is we do want this to come out a few places so we can see what it is. Now, uh, now you can see that this, since I copied it down, it did it for, uh, I didn't have to do the formula every time, did I? I just copied that formula down and it did it for each one as we went down. Um, so once you get the centered moving average, the next thing you do is you have to create something called the index. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll skip a few spots. Let me move this out. So we'll do the index now. And let me copy this format again. So for the index, uh, all it's going to be is the actual 
at this day. So it's going to be equal to the actual divided by the centered moving average. Okay. And you get this index. And we can take out a few places too. This is very easy to do. And I'll copy that down. And let me copy this formula. Control C, Control V. And then we could actually plot this index too. Uh, if I, uh, I could do like a, a scatter plot, let's say. I could copy, I could highlight this and highlight these. And then if I go insert scatter plot, it's going to show, let me, let me get rid of this title. We don't really need a title. It's going to show an index of where, where these are relative to each, each day of the week, right? And you can see that it kind of follows this pattern, the same pattern we have here. So that's basically what we have. But we are, we're not done yet because, of, because it won't, because we have to do the relatives. Okay. So, um, let me go ahead and go right here. And I'll go relatives. Let me do it again. I'll go, let me do a season. And we have to calculate the relatives. And uh, so we have these seasons, seven seasons. Let me copy this format again. Make it all look nice. Uh, so to do the relatives, we just have to, we have to take the average. Um, so if we could say, say we're on season four, after, so there's this one, let me just highlight it. So there's this one, and then on season four here, there's this one. And then season four is this one. And finally season four is that one. So we have four times season four occurs. So we would just simply take the average of that. So um, another, another quick way to do it, and I'm going to show you how to do this on Excel very quickly. And this is, you should appreciate the power of Excel if you've never done this type of thing before. So what I'm going to do, in order to do the average, I'm going to say equal sum if, and I want to sum, uh, I want to sum, this is a little bit counterintuitive, I want to sum these, okay, if they're, in this case, a 1. If one of these, every of these is a 1, they're going to sum. And then what range do I want to sum? Well, I want to sum this range. So I'm going to hit F4 here because I don't want that to move when I copy it down. And actually here should be F4 also. So now if I hit enter, uh, let me take this out a few places. So it's summing all of ones. Okay. And, uh, if I, if I, if I pull this all the way down, you see it's summing the fours here. So if I highlight this, 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 and this, and, uh, if I look down here, it says the, those four that I highlighted are summed to 4.0873. And uh, what happened there? Okay, I had to pause the video because I had a little error. If you see when I click on this formula, let me put the formula in here. I'll go equals formula text. You can see that this is pointing to H24, which is this one, all right? So this really needs to be pointing to the, this one here, this season. And if I copy that down. So now what it's doing is looking for a 1. Anytime this is a 1, then it's going to sum whatever this column is right here. So if I highlight, say, this. Well, okay, let's do the 1. So well, let's do the ones that are blue because they're easy. That's 4. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the nice thing about Excel, I can look down here at what I highlighted. It tells me what, the, what it is. So those 4 that I highlighted sum to... 4.08793, which 4 sums to 4.0793. Now, the last thing we want to do, we want to take these relatives 
And we get the average. And the way we get the average, you get you have to divide it by the number of observations. So I'm going to go divide it by um, count if. I want to count these, right? I'm going to hit F4 again. I want to count them if uh, that happens to be a 1. I can't click here the way I want to, so I'm going to go ahead and type in H1. Or H20, H23, I'm sorry. H23. Close it. And now it did the average. So that's actually the answer. So this is our answer to uh, part A. Okay. Now part B is actually even easier. Because part B, all, all you have to do, let me do it again. I'm going to copy these down. Part B is actually simpler because you don't have to do any centered averaging. So all you're going to do is all you're going to, you're going to say, uh, 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 What you would do, let me do it this way. So I'm going to just do it and it should make sense. So let me, let me delete, let me clear all these. Or I'm going to delete them. So it's going to be equal to sum if and um, so I'm going to go sum if I want to sum all of these Okay, I'm going to hit F4. I want to sum them. Yeah, forget. So I can't click here because there's something under. So that's H34. If H34, which is a 1, and that's a, there's a 1 right there, right? If they're H34, then what do I want to sum? I want to sum these. Again, I'm going to hit F4 because I don't want that to, I don't want this to move down 1 every time I copy it down. So I'm F4ing it. And then I have to divide it by, um, so I'm going to divide it by the, av av the count, right, first. First I have to divide it by the count to get the average of those. So I'm going to divide it by the count, if, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to count these. I'm going to go F4, and then I want to count all the ones that are, a one, which is under all that, so I have to type in H uh, 34 again. H 34. So now what I did, it found the average of every one of these that are one. So if I click here, hold down control, click here, 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 so that's where my ones are. If I look over here, the average is 86. Well, that rounds it, right? It's 85.5. So it looks like that's about right. Okay. And the next thing I want to do, I want to take all this. And I want to divide it by the average of all of them. So I'm going to divide by the average of all of these. I'm going to hit F4 to make sure it averages them on all of them. Close the parentheses. And this is the answer I get. I think the book, the book wants the answers to four places. So we take this. We take it down one, take that down one, and those would be our answers. Now, let, just let me double check. I want to make sure. I did, did I copy this formula down? Uh, equals formula. Let me put the formula in here. Make sure you copy the formula down, too. Okay, let me see. Okay, so I just wanted to check the book solution to make sure I did that correctly. And it does jive with the book a little bit. Nervous that I've done it correctly. So, um, anyway, uh, so that's how you would do that. Now, another way you could do it if you're, if you have access to the book, you might be able to even do this. If you don't have access to the book, if you go to this website here, you can read it. If you go, I'm going to click on that and go to it. And you can go into the student edition. And it has Excel templates. And we could go to the Excel chapter three template and open that up. And we want seasonal relatives, which would be this this one here, this tab here. I'm going to go enable editing and clear contents. Well, it won't let me clear. I thought it would clear it for me. Well, that's all right. We don't have to clear it. So 
We have seven seasons. I'm going to call this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? And we could go back and see how this automatically changes that. And I could go back to my get the get this data here. I'm going to right click and go copy. I'm going to go back to this template that we had. I'm going to paste that in here. You can only put it in, on these templates. You can only put it where it's blue. And see, so now we put those numbers in. And uh, you can see this 0.89. Let me copy that. Copy. If I paste it right here, I'm going to paste it as values. And that's the same numbers I got here. So that was actually a little bit quicker, wasn't it? Now you can use these templates. I don't mind if you, when you're turning in the homework and doing the quiz, you can do these templates. The only thing is, this answer is not the same as this answer. This you'd have to still calculate it on your own. So hopefully that made sense. I know I went kind of fast, but you can pause the video and look. Uh, I just wanted to show you how, how powerful Excel can be sometimes. There are these sum ifs, count ifs. They can be very powerful and do things uh, very quickly for you. And also, I want you to be aware of these templates, right? You can use these templates. If you, when you're turning in your homework, you can turn, you can, like you could take this, I could right click, and you could solve it here. I could right click and I could move or copy, create a copy, and I could create it over here in that other one I was just working on. I don't know, I think that might have been called uh, book one. Move it to the end. And, it, and then, see, this is where I was working. I just copied that in there and you can, and so you can copy the templates in and so when you send in your homework you can do that that's perfectly legal i won't mark off all right so anyway uh my picture is going to come up here if you want to subscribe to my channel click on that picture and hopefully that helped i'll talk to you next time oh click like if you like it do any comments thank you thanks for watching bye